Hello and welcome to a new Oxygen XML webinar. My name is George Pina and I will host today's webinar. And uh, I invited my colleague uh, Julien Lacour to present uh, today about uh, customizing or fine tuning data PDF output using uh, CSS. One of the main publishing challenges related to PDF customization which is known to be really difficult, is that uh, when you try to customize PDF output using the classic, let's say, uh, XSLT, XSLFO approach, not only that you need to know the technology, both XSLT and XSLFO, but you also need to know a lot about the specific uh, application that you try to customize, how that was designed, how uh, that uh, took into account, uh, you know, future customization. And in this context, uh, a new approach started to be used more and more, uh, and that is to use CSS to style uh, the PDF uh, output, and uh, we at the Oxygen XML uh, editor try to help uh, with this, uh, first by providing an engine that allows to obtain PDF based on CSS called Oxygen PDF Chemistry and some additional support in particular for data uh, PDF output. So uh, today, uh, my colleague uh, Julien Lacour, who is part of the PDF chemistry team, will try to give you some insight into these possibilities. Before we go a bit farther, here it is some useful information, uh, let's say on the logistics part. This webinar, as well as all our other webinars, will be recorded. And the recording will be available both from the event page on our website. On that page, you should be able to find also other resources like uh, slides or in some cases, sample files and so on. But also on our YouTube channel, Oxygen XML, uh, where you find a lot of uh, Oxygen XML related videos, uh, conference presentations and other webinars and so on. Please ask questions at any time during the uh, presentation. Uh, actually, uh, both me and uh, uh, my colleague Dan Capriwaro, who is also the he uh, one of the founders of Syncrosoft, the company that develops Oxygen and acts as uh, uh, CTO and the project manager for this PDF chemistry engine. Uh, he's also available uh, online and we will try both to answer your questions. At the end of the uh, Julian presentation, we also have uh, some time where we will go through all the questions and you get the chance to ask some additional questions. Uh, so we will re respond live to these questions so everyone can uh, see the answer, can uh, hear the answers. And um, But do not uh, stay until then. You can ask questions at any time during the webinar. Uh, that being said, uh, let me make uh, Julien presenter so he can start his presentation. Uh, hello, Julien. Welcome. Uh, thank you, George, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. So let's start to uh, with the fine-tuning your data PDF using CSS. So uh, in this presentation, we will talk more specifically about the Oxygen Publishing Engine, which is the tool you are using normally on every Oxygen product to convert your uh, data documents to PDF. So in fact, what do we mean by Oxygen Publishing Engine? It's the Data, OT, uh, the data Open Toolkit Engine which we are extending using two additional uh, plugins, the Web Help Responsive one and the PDF Chemistry, which is the one providing the support for 
CSS and PDFs. Uh, as uh, we will see in this presentation, we can use it in Oxygen, in our case in Oxygen 22.1, or you can use it as a standalone product to convert directly, for example, if you are using continuous integration. Uh, so to continue, why uh, using the Oxygen Publishing Engine? Uh, first, for the advanced web help responsive uh, output, which allows you to create some web help output where users can add comments and you can add answers. Uh, for the highly customizable PDF uh, using HTML5 and CSS, which is the, the transformation we will use in this presentation to convert our data documents to PDFs. And uh, for the advantage that the, uh, both outputs are using the HTML5 standard as a common uh, part of their transformation. So that will mean that if we are customizing one of the output, you can reuse the same uh, customizing documents, for example, the CSS style sheets, for the, the other one. So to continue and show a small example, if I have here on my left part the an example with the uh, web help output, and it's the this in the right part is the same output, but using the PDF output. So as you can see, the tables, the fonts are similar. Uh, the color is the same. The only small difference can be the uh, the page display, as this use a page, so like A4 display, and this use the browser full screen display. Uh, let's continue to the, the basics of uh, customization. Uh, elements in data are uh, always marked with some class attributes. For example, the code phrase element uh, is marked using the topic phrase element and the programming domain code phrase element, which means its uh, its, princi uh, its first class is the phrase element and as a subclass is the programming domain code phrase element. In our PDF transformation, we keep in the HTML uh, file uh, those attributes. So we can reuse those attributes to match any of the element and add any kind of property we want to for customization. So for example, we will re find in the HTML document, the topic phrase, programming domain code phrase. And the best practice, what we recommend the most is to use the same or the most specific uh, class to find the, the element in the document and to add what we want as the customization. For example, if I want my output to be colored blue, I can directly mark only the code phrase because if I use the other one, I will mark more elements if I use phrases, for example. Uh, let's use this example now. So here is the, the example I will use. Uh, I will use both a template and a CSS separately, but I will explain it as we go in the presentation. So for example, if I am using in my customization, as I told before, the phrase and I start to duplicate the default customization, the default PDF transformation to use my customization. I will go and select the CSS document, uh, transform my document. And like this, my output will be corresponding to what I, uh, I want it to look like. So I want it to be colored in blue if the element is a code phrase. So here is my output. And I have there, for example, a code phrase, which is now marked as blue. 
the advantage of the CSS HTML5 customization is that if I want to uh, check and make some debug, I can directly do it uh, using my browser or Oxygen, and I will talk to this a little later. So let's continue. So as I shown before, uh, to customize the PDF output using CSS, I can use the transformation parameter, which is the args.css parameter, which is available here. So either here from the CSS input or here directly from the parameters list or i can use a whole publishing template file which i will also use in this example which is a .opt file which i have here so the template file uh, needs a name you can set a preview image to be easily displayed on the transformation dialog some resources for example in my case i will use some default css which uh, are some customization some of the users made sometimes, and uh, some of them can show problems, and we will see how we can resolve these problems. So to use a, a template in my transformation, I will keep the same transformation, choose a specific template. I will go to my templates. So this is my new template. As you can see, Oxygen provides two default templates, and this is the new one I will use, which is my custom one, which will be used additionally with the custom CSS to make uh, both made the customization. Uh, for more example uh, and more uh, details about how to customize the PDF outputs, you can go on our website there is a full documentation which is uh, on the data data ot css publishing to pdf plugin and here we will f you will find the whole detail about uh, what i told you in the slides but with uh, more explanations so uh, to continue with the basics as the introduction, uh, we will see how we can debug the CSS. So what do we mean by debugging the CSS? In fact, uh, it's related to the usage of the merge.html file, which will contains all the modifications I, uh, I, I will uh, apply on my document and which are, will be um, moved from HTML to my PDF file. So here is my whole document. The part I modified before with the color blue is here. We can inspect the elements directly from the browser using the inspect element button or in Chrome it's called directly inspect. Uh, the, the CSS rules the default CSS rules are displayed here, and my custom rule, which is the color blue, is applied here. The advantage of debugging the CSS is that if I uh, modify the document, so I do not want any more to my code phrase to be displayed in blue, I can directly see the difference by refreshing the browser. So here, as you can see, there is no more rule applied on the color and the text is back to black. Uh, as uh, I explained before, yes, yeah, so we can use the browser inspector, the CSS inspector, which is part of the whole console uh, feature, or we can use the same uh, in Oxygen. If we open the document in Oxygen in author mode, so here is my output, and as I do in uh, the browser, I can inspect my document and see here all the CSS, which uh, can be a default one or a custom one, which is applied on my document. As I told before, for more information, there is also a debugging the CSS part on our documentation, which uh, give a lot of details more than 
I gave you now and explain also with uh, on Chrome I show this I shown the example in Firefox but in in Chrome it's exactly the same exp expecting an uh, output and you will find also how to speed up and some how to's so let's continue and start with our problems. So what kind of problems we can have is that, for example, uh, I want to control some table captions. So I want my table caption containing the, the caption contains the table title. I want it to be moved uh, either on top or, or on the bottom part. Or for example, if my table is a huge table, so it covers more than one page, I want my table title to be displayed only on the first page or on the last one. So for this, it's really simple. I can use directly two transformation parameters. So let's show you the example. Uh, I want, so my issue is that for now, my table title, so this could we'd be converted as a caption. And I want this table caption not to be displayed at the beginning. For example, now I have it at the beginning and it's repeated if my table goes on more than one page, as it say here to continue because it covers two pages. So let's change our parameters. Search for thing, we can use the search bar. I prefer my table for, to be displayed the title at the bottom and I don't want the table title to be repeated at all. I will transform again my document. And in my result, I will see that my document now automatically the title will be moved at the end of the table and will now be repeated as now it's useless to have it repeated as all the title is displayed at the end of the table. So here is my example. As you can see, there is no more title here. We go direct from the topic title to the table, no repeating. And here is my table one with uh, its title. So this is exactly what I wanted to appear. So let's go back to our table customizations. Another problem which I can uh, find sometimes is that my tables is huge, is really large in fact, and it can bleed over the page. In this case, so for example, if I use my new template, to see the default. So I, I will create some errors to show you uh, how the display can go some, some times can go wrong. And in fact, you can correct it uh, really easily. So now I have, for example, here a first problem. So here, as you can see, the the first column is too long because it's an option name. It's too long to be split it correctly by the table and goes on the second line. And here the problem I, I can have is that my columns are really thin and my content is quite compressed in these columns. And I really prefer to have something uh, bigger to have my display a little easier to read. So for this uh, first solution will be, I will use the orientation property, which is a data default property. So here I go, I will select the table, select the attributes, the orientation attribute, and now it says, the, so this table will be a landscape table. I will transform again, my document 
And as you will see, the table in this case, in fact, the whole page containing the table will be moved. So the topic will start on a page. The table will be moved on another page, which will be landscape. Then the next page will be back to the uh, portrait oriented page. So here is the starting topic. Here is my table, which is a lot bigger now because it's a uh, landscape. Here is the last line and go back now to my uh, portrait pages. Another problem I can have is that I can have the, um, the document to be displayed more. It was the, the line, uh, bleeding line. So this line, I cannot uh, correct this problem using the landscape one because it will still bleed on my page. So what I can use for this case is the a new CSS property we added, which is called overflow wrap with the value break word uh, this will be added in my customization so we will take this match for the topic we will match the table i want to match all the tables and i will set on those tables the overflow wrap condition to break word and back again to my transformation I will transform again my document to see now how my table will look. The overflow wrap uh, option indicates in fact that any word, it could be any longer, more than a lot of letters, can be the biggest English word, it will be split when the column width will be matched. So like this, we will have no more bleeding anymore. So I will get back to my problem and here as you can see now automatically my uh, my whole option is splitted when exactly where the width is uh, matched and I go on the second line so no more bleeding. An advantage of the, the overflow wrap could be that in this case there is no extra hyphen added, but a small disadvantage is that uh, depending on the uh, PDF reader you are using, in our case Acrobat Reader, sometimes the copy paste feature can lead to a content displayed on two lines. But this can be, this really depends on the PDF reader you are using. Let's go back to our table customizations. Another thing I could want to is that my last row border, so let me show you here, for example, this row is on two pages and I would like my border to be displayed. Uh, I would like my last row border, so this uh, border split it on two pages, to have a border even if the content continues on the second page. And in this case, I can use another uh, specific, this is an oxygen specific property, which is called oxy borders conditionality, which in our case has as a parameter can have the retain parameter. The retain parameter means that the last uh, each table last line will have a border uh, without, without regarding if it's the if the line continues or not so my transformation finishes now okay I will go back to my table and as you can see now the this row is still on two pages but a new border I had appear just here uh, as I explained for the other uh, parts uh, to go further you can go to our uh, 
documentation. So the user guide contains a lot of how-to sections for the uh, table-specific uh, customizations for the cell rotating to the table title removal or to center it. Uh, let's continue to another problem. Some of you have maybe seen that my document had another problem now. If I go there, I have a preserved element which stops normally here, but as you can see, my content, in fact, it goes until it meets an hyphen and does the normal hyphenation using the hyphen as breakpoint. Uh, I would like the whole content to be displayed inside my preserved element. So to this, I will use again the overflow wrap break word, which can be also applied on preserved elements. So let's reuse my examples so in my customizations i want the preserved elements to have the overflow wrap options to fit inside their content because i i forced in my uh, customization the preserved element to have 25 percent of the page only it can be sometimes if i have it can be used if sometimes i have the element for example, in a table, or if I have more than one element and I want them displayed inline, for example. So if I get back to my example, now, as it was for the option in the table, my preserved element now have all its content fit inside. As I told you before, the advantage are no extra hyphens are displayed. So what I see it is exactly what I want to be displayed. The disadvantage can be the copy paste depending on the reader. Let's continue on another feature, which is the mark, the marking and the flagging of the content. What I mean by marking the content is that I can this I will like to display some change bars on the content or some images so let's start with the change bars i would like my uh, tracked content so in my example i have some a topic which has some modifications some uh, people made and i would like this modification to be displayed directly as change bars like this like it's here for example like this i can identify easily in my whole text which is new or which is removed from the previous version for example i had so for this i will uh, show the changes because normally this is disabled by default so as you can see here there is no modification uh, displayed. Now I will display them and I will use in fact this parameter, which I will modify back to see you the difference before and after, because the new parameter we add and which is in fact activated by default is called show changes and comments as change bars. So this, parameter allow the user to add a, an additional change bar uh, in the paragraph he wants to show where the modify uh, when he wants to show the modifications so here is the default when I uh, I put the setting off so I have a removal and something inserted and if I set back the default option, which is show changes and comment as change bar. I will set back it to its default yes value. Now a gray change bar will appear exactly on the left part of the document, making me easy, uh, easier to uh, go on my document and stop exactly where the modification is to 
what uh, has been added or removed. So now get back to my uh, topic. As I explained before, there is two additional change bars now. Obviously, these change bars can be customized using uh, this kind of uh, selector. So the oxy range start, which marks the starting point of the modification and adding, for example, another color or another width. So I will show you immediately the modification. So here I marked my element or my class. It depends on what is used in my HTML document. And before them, where the change bar is displayed, because it's displayed before the element, I will set my change bar note from gray to orange and uh, its width will be only 0 0.5 points. So even this could be customized, even if it starts by an option on the transformation dialog, as you can see, you can, uh, you can also customize these points. Uh, let's continue with the marking. Uh, I want to, uh, I want my comment. So as you have seen before, I have here some callouts containing the whole text which is inserted and deleted. Uh, this could be a problem if I have a lot of modifications in my documents. And it could be it could lead to a difficult search of these modifications. So what I can use is uh, the show change text in PDF sticky notes. So the sticky note is those callouts. And like this, I can remove the text and only keep uh, the type of the modification. So here I will disable this to hide the text in the final PDF. So the main advantage of doing this is that if I have hundreds of modifications, I will I can directly filter them using their type. So if there are uh, insertions or deletions. So get back to my transformation using the comment section. As you can see now, I can go, for example, and say I want to search for the deleted content. And I go back there and see, OK, this match my deleted content now. And if I remove my filter, here was the insertion, the inserted content. Uh, last part regarding the uh, marking and the flagging is that I can mark the document with uh, change bars and uh, other image flags only using uh, attributes from the document. And for this, I will use uh, which is called in DITA the DITAVAL file, which defines a conditional processing profile, in fact. So here I have in my example a whole DITAVAL file defining here two uh, change bars which are defined by their color, their style, etc. and which uh, are displayed on the uh, element revision where the revision on my uh, element, data element, is on 1.0. If I use the 2.0 revision on my document, it will be a green change bar displayed at the end of the paragraph. So you can fully customize these change bars. The other change bar display I will do on my document is that I will use some uh, image flagging. In my case, when the product, so my rocket uh, ship is the X22000. I will add some uh, small uh, images at the beginning and at the end. So my images look like those. There are some small markers. So 
as my uh, data val document is already inserted in my document, the topic using uh, these data val values are, is this one. So as you can see here, the astronautics uh, text has been added in revision 1.0. The X22000 is my product, so I flag it with the product X22000. And the last paragraph has been added at the revision.2.0. So let's transfer my document and see how this is converted in my final PDF. And I will find in my output, so two change bars, so the first one and the second one, and my two images directly into my document. So as I explained, so this is the first revision mark in uh, blue, which with a specific blue change bar. This is my product with its two flagging images, the start and the end element and the second revision marked in green with its own change bar. Uh, as for the other part, uh, there is a whole chapter in the documentation which is the resume of what I explained on the for the change bars and for the image flagging. Let's move to the next part, which is publishing a single topic, because some users may want to publish one single topic out of an entire document. So to achieve this, they will use a single topic publishing, which is the transformation called data PDF based on HTML5 and CSS, because it's the same uh, transformation. So it uses also the Oxygen Publishing Engine except it's applied on a single topic and not on the whole data map. And uh, as I explained at the beginning, as the product Oxygen Publishing Engine could be used uh, separately from Oxygen, this could be used also as the format, so the data transformation format called PDF CSS HTML5 for single topic. So let's try, for example, I would like to display this single topic, which contains all my planets. I will transform it with an already prepared transformation. And I will show in this uh, transformation some of the problems which can uh, intervene when you are using the single topic publishing. So the first one will be that my I have an uh, I have some images which are not displayed. So as you can see here, I lost uh, all my images. I would like them to get back in my documents. And another thing I lost is this whole paragraph because it's inserted using the X reference, and this is not processed by the, the publishing engine from now. To resolve this problem, as you can see also here, there is a lot of errors matching the missing images and my XREF. To resolve this problem, I will use two specific data parameters, which are oxygen parameters. The first one is the fixed external refs, which will uh, copied my image back, so I will get back my images in my document. The other uh, parameter is the args enable root map key processing. So I will go back to my transformation, check for the fixed external ref, so I want the external refs to be processed, and I want the root map to be processed. So in fact, what I done now is that the first parameter, so the fixed external, uh, the fixed external refs, will copy the images in the output folder, 
like this, it will be seen by the transformation engine and copied to the final output. The second parameters, in fact, just enable a part of the default data map processing, which will uh, back process the whole data map, even if you are processing only a single document. But like this, all the content we will be uh, get from my document. So here are my images, and here is my XREF which was in fact in another topic. So I, I got back this uh, paragraph from its correct topic, which was not seen at the beginning by this single topic alone. Let's continue to the, the oxygen styles basket. So I will present again for those who don't know about the styles basket so it's a new part of the oxygen family which uh, allows you to customize to give you a starting point for the css beginners uh, giving you a lot of default customizations for uh, a whole list of elements so for the fonts the tables the lists uh, even the page format and hold this text for example let me do a small example i will use this font uh, together with the 14 font size i will use an a5 document i don't want my document to be uh, published in a4 and I want my tables to be displayed only like this and the borders to be thick. So I can directly use the style basket to uh, show some uh, online results or I can download directly my CSS customization, which I will do now. The advantage of this is that now if I go and check my result. So this has been generated by the Oxygen Styles basket. I find back my settings. So the 14 point font size, the A5 page. And if I reuse another clean transformation and set this result from the Oxygen Styles basket, I will see directly on my output what the Oxygen Styles Basket showed me before. So this will be compliant to what I expect as a basic customization. Then now I can just uh, add other rules to my documents or modify the existing ones so as you've seen the font is 14 on an a5 page and the tables are modified accordingly to what i've set on my styles basket so the main advantage is the export uh, css the other option exports a whole publishing template so the .opt file uh, the online preview available uh, for uh, if you want to see the, res the result as you are modifying the styles basket. It's a perfect starting for uh, beginners and for people who, who, which knows uh, more about CSS, you can directly go on the, whole, the user guide and see here the whole a chapter about customizing PDF outputs using CSS, which contains a lot of examples, a lot of different topics, and each of them containing one or more how-tos. So um, now, finally, to end with these examples, I will explain how to, you can use the continuous integration together with the Oxygen Publishing Engine. So now I will use it outside of Oxygen.
for this i will back to i will go back to my uh, example and for this i will use another example which is a specific jenkins example containing uh, our user guide the publishing engine so it's se separately installed on my project at my project level and a specific publishing template which contains all my css customizations all my images xsl additional file etc etc so for those who need the publishing engine you need first to download it on the oxygen website after you can put it as i done in my example at the project level or install it directly on the jenkins server machine then after all you need to do is to configure the jenkins build to use the data default command which will use the our format so the pdf css and the input output uh, options with the input data map and the output directory which will contain the PDF. So in my case, it's done using both uh, Maven and Ant. In fact, my Maven uh, artifact is calling an Ant uh, build, which, as you can see at the beginning, calls the data.bat um, command, which is included in the publishing engine and pass all the parameters i want for doing the whole transformation so any data file files the user guide the user manual data maps the format which is the one i told i write in the pdf css so pdf css html5 and uh, if i go on my document so as if i was a jenkins uh, server so the command i will do for to realize my um, my transformation will be the clean compile from maven which is in fact the target which is called which called uh, the the ant uh, build which uh, will do the whole uh, command to create the PDF output. So let the transformation finishes. So here is the whole command processing all the pages. Here call is the call to, to chemistry. Then at the end, I will obtain my result. which will be a PDF containing all my uh, specific uh, customization and documents. So the build is a success. A little more details here, you can see that uh, it searches for chemistry. There is the common called the output directory. So let's go, let go to the output directory, which is here. I will find the chemistry folder and here is my output so as you can see uh, only calling externally the publishing engine i can do a whole customization including uh, fonts images etc etc and this concludes the presentation uh, thank you julian uh, and uh... Uh, please ask uh, uh, some more questions uh, and before uh, I will uh, uh, look into the questions and uh, try to answer, uh, I want to emphasize a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, uh, the, the big advantage with uh, using CSS for uh, customization is that you can just basically match uh, and add rules and that's it you don't need to necessarily uh, understand uh, how uh, the rest of the uh, processing happens uh, in the 
you know, like uh, Julien presented at the beginning, you have uh, these inspectors to debug and see uh, what happens. So then you can just add more specific uh, uh, matches, for instance, or set a higher priority on, on your rules, like with the bang uh, that increases the priority uh, of, uh, of a specific uh, uh, setting. I think the uh, being able to publish a single topic, uh, but also getting the context uh, taken into account is uh, uh, really uh, an interesting part uh, that should be highlighted. Um, the Styles Basket, it's it's a great product, and uh, uh, we will we plan to do more work on that to uh, increase the number of styles that you can choose from and uh, again uh, if you pay attention to that uh, basically you 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 style both the web help html based and the pdf uh, output with that very easily and the last thing that I want to emphasize is the uh, this uh, new product that we released which is actually not something new, but uh, called Oxygen Publishing Engine, which is actually the engine that was always available within Oxygen itself. But we make this available to you also outside of Oxygen, so you can uh, push. Uh, once you have something that works within Oxygen, then you know sometimes it takes a lot of time to replicate the same. Uh, settings outside. So now with the Oxygen Publishing Engine, you can obtain the same transformation uh, in a, a script or in a continuous integration ser server as uh, Julien presented. Yeah, so this, these were a few of the highlights that I wanted to uh, emphasize a bit. And now uh, let's uh, go through uh, some of the questions. So. Uh, can we customize the cover pages of a PDF uh, for this transformation scenario? Uh, at my company, we have data maps for user manuals, uh, and on the data map level, before the references of topics and other maps, uh, we have a metadata container uh, from which the information uh, goes before the table of contents, but we use uh, Another transformation which is based on formatting objects and XSLT, and could that be done with uh, with uh, this approach? Uh, and the answer is yes. And let me try to uh, because uh, my colleague Dan actually answered this, and uh, he also provided a couple of pointers. Uh, let me try to quickly switch presenter to me. Show my screen. Yeah, so uh, we have a really uh, good documentation for uh, the chemistry engine, um, and you see that uh, the cover pages uh, have a section in the documentation, so you have here uh, a lot of information, and there is actually also exactly a, a section uh, on how to show metadata in the cover page. So uh, basically, you can uh, use our pseudo elements support and the oxy oxygen expat function to generate content in in this pseudo element. So even if your metadata is in some other parts of the document, you can extract that and uh, push that into these uh, pseudo elements and we have multiple levels of uh, pseudo elements so you can say after after two after 100 and so on uh, before before two before five before ten and so on uh, so you can uh, with these multiple levels of uh, pseudo elements uh, it's a lot simpler to um, you know to avoid getting into an uh, exp exponential growth of uh, taking into account a uh, lot of different things. Okay. Um, can we, how can I change the font on the uh, table of content title? Uh, I think uh, the styles basket uh, also contains some uh, uh, 
rules about that. Uh, Julien, do you want to show a bit of that or I should try to... Uh, so okay. yeah sure it's possible to yeah, there is also a section in the user guide for the specific table of content so and uh, if you use the debugger i i'm sure you can match the the element the title and just yeah. set the font family or the font size you want yeah so here it is the section on table of contents uh, but I also wanted to emphasize that uh, styles.oxygenxml.com basically gives you even now, right now, access to the uh, uh, styles basket. And then you have the table of content parts here, and then you can choose some of the, of the predefined styles. And then uh, you uh, will obtain maybe the download the CSS associated with that and then uh, modify that further. So that's uh, that's another present possibility. Um, thank you for the presentation. It looks like it is going to help us with custom change bars for different values in the rev attribute, uh, in the revision attribute. Uh, yeah, so Julien presented also on the change bars part. Do you want to add uh, anything? Uh, no, I, I think the the whole customization is uh, can be done with using uh, either the revision using the DitaVal or uh, you can directly match the... There is an, another part of the user guide talking directly about the, the change bars. So you can also add some change bars in the content directly using some CSS properties. Mm -hmm. uh, another question, uh, is the styles basket included in the price for Oxygen Publishing Engine? Uh, and the, the answer is uh, the styles basket is generally available. So it's uh, uh, you can use it right now. So you just... Uh, 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 go to styles.oxygenxml.com and then you should be able to uh, make a customization and download uh, the, uh, the the CSS. And then you can also upload uh, an ex a CSS that you downloaded, let's say, and uh, apply some uh, additional changes to that. Can I use the CSS I have for the PDF to display the source data files in author mode? Uh, in this way, I would have a preview um, of the look, uh, probably that look the same, probably. Uh, um, I, well, I, I yeah. can answer that. Uh, yeah, you, normally you can totally set the the PDF as an additional, uh, the CSS, sorry, as an additional CSS in the author mode, if this was the question, if I understand correctly, no? Yeah, so, and you also... Can, you can, from Oxygen, add uh, a CSS and set another CSS on the NixML file or on the data files, and the customization will be applied on the author mode also. So you will see something like uh, what you see is what you get output between the topics and the PDFs. Yeah, and and, and that depends uh, a bit on the how you uh, how your selectors are uh, created for the CSS, yeah. whether you match on the class uh, attribute values, because uh, if you match on the class attribute values uh, from HTML, then those will be found in the data part, in the in the XML part. Uh, actually, uh, the data CSS, uh, data OT plugin that we have, has two modes of operation. One is to apply CSS on the HTML, and the other is to apply CSS directly on the XML. So in in this uh, second case. Uh, the CSS will be basically the same, uh, more or less, uh, except for the print-specific uh, parts, let's say. 
but even with the CSS for the HTML part, if that is uh, will match on the class attributes, uh, then the, the data has the same class attributes. So then the matches will work also on the XML part, uh, and then you can reuse uh, uh, that. How easy would it be to convert a whole data documentation? Uh, with specifications like unique XML uh, elements, attributes, to work with this uh, transformation. Is there uh, any XSLT to be customized? Uh, or can they be copied from the original? Um, so uh, the I guess that you are asking uh, if you have a specialization, a data specialization, uh, which has unique XML element names and uh, attributes and so on. Well, uh, the transformation uh, actually works uh, by matching on the class attributes. So, uh, even if you do not uh, customize the publishing immediately, you should still be able to get a uh, reasonable output. Then you can just add the CSS customization layer matching specifically on either the element names if you want, but maybe on the corresponding class names for your new, new specialized elements uh, and that uh, will uh, uh, will basically ha have higher priority and you will get that in the CSS. Of course, uh, uh, if you use the HTML based uh, uh, to CSS PDF output, then uh, you can uh, use also the, the, the whole idea of customizing the HTML in data. You know, all that uh, knowledge, all that layer, and then you can customize uh, uh, that HTML and that will be further with XSLT, uh, right? And then uh, uh, you will see that further uh, when uh, that content goes to through CSS and then uh, to obtain the uh, PDF. And uh, if I may add uh, a small uh, additional point, if you your customization also includes some XSL specific uh, transformation, the the publishing engine can uh, use inside the template. You can declare as extension points some XSL additional style sheets, with which will be processed during the transformation and the creation of the the merged uh, the merged .xml and merged .html files. So if you have some specific XSLT style sheets, they they will be applied also on the the, the output. Uh, another question: uh, Can overflow wrap text? Can overflow wrap uh, column break word? Uh, probably it's, it means do you support the uh, overflow wrap? Uh, uh, to break at the word level. Uh, can overflow wrap uh, be customized, for example, to break the line at a period or hyphen? Uh, no, at the moment, no, because the the overflow wrap, in fact, uh, defines the defines the the breaking inside words. So this is only used when you want to break words at a specific or in fact at no specific moment. On if you want to break words as uh, some specific uh, syllabus or etc., you will need to use back the hyphens pro CSS property. But the overflow wrap means that you want the words to be break anywhere. This is why there is also the hyphens 
specific CSS property, which if you set it on auto, which is normally, for example, on tables, it's the default one. And in, in this case, the words will be broke at a specific moment, which corresponds to the language you are using currently, if it's English or German, etc. Uh, if I uh, I did try the styles basket for the TOC, but it uh, did not uh, include a title. Um, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, we plan to uh, work more on the styles basket, so then we can uh, uh, add more. Uh, different styles, basically styles fragments that can be uh, customized through the styles basket. Um, yeah, uh, basically it's uh, right now we have the engine and the uh, uh, number of styles that are already there, but then uh, we need to provide more, uh, more in, uh, support for different axes, let's say, uh, possibilities that can be customized through that. Um, but uh, you can refer back to the documentation, maybe, uh, like uh, the uh, table of contents part, and then uh, uh, probably get more uh, information here, uh, you know, for uh, how you can customize maybe uh, the titles that appear in the uh, table of contents. Can you load uh, custom fonts uh, in the oxygen styles basket? Um, well, that's not available right now, but uh, uh, once you select uh, some font related uh, options, then you probably should be able to change them basically from the uh, generated CSS to point to your uh, actual fonts. Um, can you show where to find documentation uh, about publishing uh, a single at the time a single pay a single topic probably? Uh, so do do you know Julian where if we have uh, uh, I, that is covered, maybe. I guess we have something in the oxygen user guide. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you want to be the presenter. Uh, let me be sure. I will search for this. Yeah. But I search don't... for that, and if you find it, I can make you uh, the presenter. Uh, is it possible to change uh, the PDF page layouts to landscape? Uh, uh, yes, uh, so basically uh, CSS has uh, specific uh, rules for uh, uh, for print and uh, you have a section here exactly uh, about how to change the page orientation. Uh, any links available uh, on how to install the Oxygen Publishing Engine? So basically, uh, when you have uh, Oxygen, you already have the Oxygen Publishing Engine in, in Oxygen XML Editor or uh, Oxygen uh, uh, XML Author, for instance. But on our website, under Products, then you can find also uh, a specific uh, entry for Oxygen Publishing Engine. Uh, and as uh, Julian uh, mentioned, Oxygen Publishing Engine includes the Oxygen App, Web Help and the PDF Chemistry. That's why uh, these additional products are in a way subordinated to uh, Oxygen Publishing Engine because Oxygen Publishing Engine bundles them. And then if you click on that, then you should be able to find uh, the download page uh, with the instructions, uh, for requirements, installation instructions, and so on. Uh, 
getting started the tips for newbies. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, we have, uh, I think, a, a really good documentation for the uh, Oxygen Publishing Engine. Uh, so uh, many uh, topics are how to related, so how to do different things, how to, uh, uh, you see, how to omit the front page, uh, the TOC, the glossary and so on, uh, about customizing uh, different parts and so on. So, uh, yeah, uh, try this and uh, feel free to contact us also on our uh, support channels. Uh, if you see here, we have uh, a forum, we have mailing lists. Uh, so yeah, you are welcome to uh, write messages on uh, any of these channels. And normally the, the majority of the how-tos uh, came from uh, users feedback which normally it's the they are the most common asked questions so if a question is missing you can give us feedback and see oh, i want to do some specific customization if it's relevant enough to make a whole topic of it we will add it and update our documentation Yeah, so we basically, uh, we are ending today a series of webinars uh, that you find under company events. We had uh, eight webinars uh, under uh, past events uh, scheduled every week in the last uh, two months. Um, you can find them recorded here. Uh, this one will also be soon uh, available in the past events section together with the recording as you can see for the other webinars with the slides and sometimes with the uh, sample content and so on um, and now uh, we uh, our next uh, event will be uh, the convex uh, conference uh, which is a virtual experience of so the vx uh, stand for content virtual experience uh, or virtual experience using content something like that which is an online event created by CIDM to replace uh, um, Dita North America and Dita Europe so uh, as uh, normal uh, you know like usual uh, conferences that we used to go to uh, hopefully, we will uh, uh, add uh, a few other events, maybe even before September. Uh, there are some ideas, so stay tuned. You should be able to uh, uh, stay updated if you join maybe our uh, mailing list, for instance. We will, on the Oxygen user mailing list, we post uh, there when we have uh, a new event. You can use also this uh, uh, list to get in touch with other Oxygen users, maybe share uh, your experience or ask for um, help with some parts and so on. Uh, yep. So that being said, uh, I want to thank Julian, thank also to Dan, my colleague who responded uh, he was quiet, but uh, he responded to many of the questions uh, in background. And thank you all for attending, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll meet you soon, uh, for sure, at uh, some other online events, and hopefully to also some in-person events. Uh, so stay safe, have a nice summer, and uh, uh, let's keep in touch and see uh, if we can meet again maybe sooner than September. Goodbye. Thank you.